Welcome back to the Contributor Corner for Run Radio. Alex De Luca, Italian chef for Italian Kitchen here in Springfield. You've got so many things that we need to know when it comes to Italian food. So what do you have this time? Okay, I have a sad story to begin with. Oh, so no. I was, I was in Springfield for very little time, and someone invited me to dim and thinking they were doing something really 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 fancy for me because i'm italian they brought me to an italian restaurant it really happened to be the olive garden oh no okay. oh i know i know so you can imagine this young boy just coming from the motherland walking into uh, olive garden first the scent around was something I never smelled before because garlic, do we use garlic in Italian cuisine? Oh yeah, we use garlic. Do we use as much garlic as anybody here thinks we use? Hell no. <laughs> I mean, to the point that 95% of the recipes will tell you crack the, the garlic, put it in the oil. When the garlic is fried, take it out. We really rarely leave the garlic in the, the plate, the, the dish that we are cooking. Right. So just, just that was just like, oh my goodness, when, I, when I'm working, walking. And then I opened this uh, menu and there were a bunch of dishes that I never heard. Of. And the person with me was saying, oh, they're Italian, you might know Spumone. I said, oh, what is that? Oh no, spumoni. And you know, like everybody does when you don't understand, they, they say the same word, just louder, okay? <laughs> or louder and slower, okay? But I mean, if I didn't get it the first time, there is no, no way that I can be. Yeah, I mean, you can say, but I would not understand it, but whatever. And so I see all this stuff and I say, oh my goodness, so, I mean, this is not an Italian restaurant. I mean, and so, I think it's important because in the year, you can imagine, I met many people with the same ideas. Oh, I come from that place. That's a really Italian. And now that I have a restaurant, it's even funnier to the point that I have to put all my description of the restaurant. It's authentic Italian and Italian American because those two planes, they never touch each other. They're just like, you know, those ideas that they give you on uh, when you are there are two different things. They kind of share the same ingredients, but they use different things. So, for example, Alfredo sauce is everybody's asked for Alfredo sauce. Alfredo sauce is not really an Italian sauce. Really? It's not 100%. Now, it was invented in Italy by someone whose name was Alfredo. But okay. his idea, and he was born at the beginning of the 1900. He needed something to help his wife recover after uh, giving birth to his son. He happened to own a restaurant, and we're talking about the beginning of the 1900. So there are there were few foods that were not normally available to everybody. So milk was possible, but it wasn't that common. Butter was possible, but it was expensive, and so. What he did, he literally created a pasta that had butter, pasta, a little bit of water from the pasta, the cooking water, and uh, cheese and parmigiano. Okay, that's it. That's the original uh, Alfredo sauce. That's the thing that sometimes you will see on videos uh, on YouTube of people just having a, half, a whole wheel of parmigiano. They put something to give it to put it on fire, and then they throw the pasta with the water and butter and they mix it. and the parmigiano melts and that's what they give you. That's it what we consider uh, Alfredo. Okay. But if you go anywhere in Italy that is not pretty much two miles around the restaurant that invented that thing, nobody knows what Alfredo. I mean, you can live, you can sit in Torino, in Firenze, in Bologna, in Milano, asking for Alfredo. They look at you like they don't even know know what you're talking about. How did it get so popular here then? When because it... in the 50s, 
actors were coming to Italy to shoot movies in Rome. I mean, Roman vacation. I mean, what do you call it? We call it Vacanze Romane, Roman holiday, where with Gregory Peck with the, and uh, Audrey Hepburn on the Vespa going around Rome. All oh. those actors were coming to Rome, going to eat in the main restaurants, find that that dish was good for oh. how simple it was and bring it back. But of course, they bring back this idea and they explain the way they were able to. And so if you come to me and say, I had this thing and you give me an idea what it is, unless I know what it is, I'm trying to recreate it. Okay. And because, you know, it's not easy to recreate the technicality of making a dish, they are the print. And so it became this heavy thing. Well, in the origin, yes, it's not light, but it's not as heavy as the Alfredo here. And, oh, sorry, uh, hold your seat because I'm going to okay. give you something. Something is, is bad. It's really bad. Every time if someone asks for something like that, I have to put up a face, poker face, pretend I didn't hear anything and give a nice answer. We don't use chicken as a protein in any pasta. If you ask for chicken, people literally will, I, I don't even know. I mean, they will just either laugh at you, think you're crazy, or don't even acknowledge the information that you just gave them. So then what do you primarily use? In oh, we use food? beef, we use seafood. You don't put chicken, that's it. I don't know why, <laughs> don't ask me why, I don't know. But every time someone says, can you put chicken on that? No, I don't know. I cannot put chicken. I mean, I'm not going to put chicken on that stuff. Oh, my god! Because goodness. I don't do that. I don't know why chicken is not something that we put in pasta. So Alfredo is not Italian. And chicken Alfredo is even less Italian What's than it? that. But it's not the only thing. I mean, uh, months ago, a lady came here to the restaurant and asked, oh, man, you're an Italian restaurant. Do you do muffolata? Of course, the answer is yes. We do yes. And then I go search for it and say, okay, what is a mofolata? Because I never heard of it. And it comes out that, yeah, it was invented by an Italian person in New Orleans at the end of the 1800s. So you said in yes because you didn't want to disappoint her. And you went to exactly, look it up. Because she said, nobody, nobody's making it. So, I, yeah, that's, what, that's my normal thing. Do, do you make this? Yes. And then he either... I invent, oh. I figure out how to do it. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you know what you're doing, you can pretty much create anything unless you are, you know, in a pickle. So, muffolata is not Italian as well. The nice sandwich with all those layers of uh, meat. No. I go farther. All those sandwiches that you see advertised online with that much meat that you say, oh, my goodness, uh, they are not Italian. <laughs> Even the, the one that they call the Italian because all that meat. Uh -uh, no, no, that's not Italian. No, we don't have anything that looks like that. It's been very Americanized. <laughs> a lot. Okay, a lot. Or one of the biggest disappointed, disappointment that uh, you have. So you are, imagine me growing up in the 70s, the 80s in Italy. We get all these American uh, TV shows, and you see everybody. Someone is eating a pizza. It is eating a pizza, and it's, it's dubbed so pizza con pepperoni. And so you thought, man, these American people they love pepperoni like nobody's business. For us, pepperoni is peppers. Uh... Okay, so you come here, you ask a pizza with pepperoni, and they give you that, and you say, okay, there is there's a problem here. Or Americans get disappointed because they go to Italy, they ask a pizza with pepperoni, and people say, okay, and they bring a pizza with peppers. Oh my goodness. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So there are little things that get lost because the people who came here in waves from Italy, they evolved being in the US. They don't evolve being in Italy. And so there is a discrepancy between what they think is Italian and what is actually going on in Italy. And so you, I meet people who have been here for three or four generations and they have all these old ideas what's Italian. 
And I mean, that, that stereotypical idea that they had is not there anymore. We are a little bit more different than that. But the last thing that I want to tell you okay. is never, ever, 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 ever break your spaghetti. Every time you break a spaghetti, a handful of Italian die of a of broken heart. Hey, that? Don't yeah. say that's not true. It's, Why it's can't oh, yeah. we break oh, our yeah. spaghetti? Yes, Why? you don't break a spaghetti. Every time you break a spaghetti, an angel loses his wings. Don't tell fibs. Why is that? Does it ruin it? Yes, it's a rule. You put, you put them in the pot, you put them in the water, <laughs> wait for them to get a little bit wet so they fold themselves, and then you mix them. And then cut them. <laughs> no, you don't cut them. If you, you bring if you it to me to and them, then I cut them? <laughs> no, you don't cut them. No, you don't cut I your plate. Guess. I go as far as Livy letting you eat the spaghetti with a spoon and a fork. So All you can right. roll the spoon. Well, have it your way. Thank you for letting us know how to be better Italian eaters. Learn more about Alex DeLuca, The Italian Kitchen, and our other contributors at runradio.net.